So in stunt journalism, you really found your voice. I was able to uncover the truth and shed light on issues in society that needed to improve. I was on a mission, yes, you could say that, embracing the helpless and the unfortunates and exposing the scam artists. What were some of the most important stories you worked on? There was a baby selling racket in New York City, specifically for the poor and girls with infants born to shame. It was a money-making trafficking industry. I posed as a young mother in trouble and the doctor was willing to take my child for $25 if I complied to the full surrendering of the child without any knowledge whatsoever of what was to become of it. Eight out of 10 of the babies died. The rest became orphans. That's truly awful. A heavy issue to dive into. I did have some lighthearted ones as well. <laughs> I was a chorus girl to find out what really goes on behind stage. I did ballet. I worked as a factory girl exposing working conditions and low pay in the city. <laughs> I even signed up for a matrimonial service with the contracted promise to pay $100 once I was married. <laughs> I hate to disappoint, but that led to no results. <laughs> I even got to report on crime and killings, which I was told women would never do because we aren't serious enough. I interviewed Ava Hamilton, who was Robert Ray's wife, who is the nephew of Alexander Hamilton, because nobody would listen to her side of the story. She was accused of infidelity, a baby purchasing scandal, and attempted murder. You moved seamlessly from story to story. Some say you should have pursued acting. <laughs> You're so kind. I was a theater reviewer at the beginning of my career, but while I thoroughly enjoy the theater, I have no desire to be on stage. There's no doubt that you broke barriers with your detailed, distinct voice, but there are some people who criticize your use of stunt journalism in order to find the truth. Specifically, lobbyist Edward R. Phelps. His supporters have made it very clear what they think about my work. I was receiving so many tips about bribery in New York. Everyone already knew what was happening, but they were waiting for someone to take charge and do something about it. Can you explain what happened? I posed as the wife of a patent medicine manufacturer who wanted to block a proposed legislation, Bill Number 191, and said that it was affecting my husband's industry. I met with Mr. Phelps and asked if he could Suppress it. Yes, never fear, I can kill the bill. It's gonna cost you money though, you know? I can assure you I can pay anything up to $3,000 if you can assure me that the bill will be stopped. I can assure you that. I'm in control of the house. I can pass or kill any bill I want. Next week, I'm gonna pass some bills and make $10,000. Of course, you don't have to worry about paying $3,000. There will be my expenses, and uh, I need to pay some assemblymen. Mm, Mr. Crosby of New York, rich man, can't be bought. But we can buy Gallagher of Ear, Talmage of Kings, Prime of Essex, DeWitt of Ulster, Hagen of New York, and McLaughlin of Kings. Six out of 11, baby, majority wins. <laughs> I'll give you the whole lot for, you know, six for $1,000. It's a good deal, what do you say? Six for a thousand. The rest are no good, but I could get you six. He gave you all the names? He didn't even know you. What happened next? I printed the details and exposed how legislation is promoted or destroyed by the king of the Albany lobby. Phelps wrote a letter to the world in response. I have no objection that your confident correspondent, Nellie Bly, has paid attention to me. I mean, <laughs> I do object that she used groundless statements that affect people to concoct a sensational romance such as you suppose your readers relish. I knew that woman was a blackmailer and, you know, newspaper imposter from the start. My intention was to uh, teach her a lesson. That was a whole cloth lie. And I didn't name any, any assemblymen or hint about buying anybody. The world is a romance and she is a bogus lunatic. 
He gave me a list of names I could buy. I took it home with me. But I think people are concerned with your methods, pretending to be someone else to get to the truth. Do you honestly believe that if I walked into his office claiming to be Nellie Bly, he would have admitted to bribery? Sometimes you have to do what's necessary for the greater truth. Even if it leads to a court case in front of the Assembly Judiciary Committee? Especially if it leads to that. Let me propose a question to you. If Phelps was an innocent man, why did he skip town? Phelps left Albany and never returned. He was officially dethroned. And if going undercover was what it took to make change, I'm okay with that.